up in a lot of plays on Saturday. Just how would you evaluate the way you were able to play against Kentucky? Um, I always love a team that sticks to what they do and they just try and pound it <coughs> all game. Um, you know, huge respect to that team. You know, that's a great, tough team. Uh, they play hard-nosed football. You know, they're a lot like us, the way we run our program. Um, you know, I just, I love those type of games where it's just downhill run, just old school football, just man on man. Jalen had eight pressures last week against Kentucky, made life really difficult for them. What's been your thoughts on just the way he started the season? You know, he's starting off fast. Um, you know, you, you've seen it ever since his freshman year. He has that get off, he has speed, and he has that ability to dip and get under blockers. Um, you know, it's just really hard to block him. You know, he's got all the traits and everything to, you know, be a world-class rusher, so. Yeah, how do you think Brock played, Brock Vandegrift played, and did you say anything to him after the game? Yeah, I mean, he played his butt off. I mean, he he had a bunch of rushing yards on us. Uh, he did a great job of scrambling when we covered up for receivers downfield. Uh, he did a great job on pulling and reading our defense when they were in uh, read options a lot. Um, you know, I talked to him after the game. Obviously, it's uh, it was a tough loot loss for them. It was a close loss, um, so I mean, didn't talk too much. You know, let him have his space um, and talk to him after that. Chaz, Trevor was just up here and he mentioned that he addressed the team um, at some point after before his suspension, I guess, and after his arrest. Um, I don't know when exactly that was, but um, can you kind of explain what his message was and kind of how the team's reception to it was, given you know everything that the team has been through the last few years. Um, you know, his message was um, don't be like him in that way that he didn't rely on teammates uh, that night. We always say be our brother's keepers on, you know, Friday nights, Saturday nights after the games. Um, you know, and he just wanted to use himself as an example to the other guys to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes. And is it disappointing when you see a teammate like Daniel Harris kind of have a slip up like that? Yeah, um, our, our staff has driven into us. Um, we've done a bunch of stuff. We've talked about it. Um, you know, and we're just trying to drive it down to, you know, just make the main thing the main thing. There's no reason to put the team at risk or our, um, our standard or our identity. Kaz, when Coach Hart was in here, he was talking about you know, the importance of improvement during this bye week. When you look at you guys on defense, what do you want to see improvement on over these next few days? I think one thing that we always want to see improvement on is depth. We always need depth. It's SEC ball. This is a long road we have. It's a long schedule. It's a hard schedule. So we need depth. We need younger guys to step up. We need guys to fill in positions that, you know, football isn't, you can't predict when people are going to go down. Um, you know, we need depth at every single position. We're trying to preach that to the young guys right now that uh, they need to get ready now. It's not time for them to wait till next year. What kind of response have you seen at this point in the week from the offensive line now that, that Tate's out and working his way back from injury? You know, I think Micah has always worked hard. Um, you know, that interior line we have is first off huge, uh, powerful, and fast um, and you know I just I don't think it was any change it's just um, just how they work every single day and he just has to step into that role and prepare like it's you know every single game week so yeah it was a really unusual game the other night in that uh, Kentucky did have such uh, success running the football, but once they got over the 50, you, you guys' numbers were pretty unbelievable. I mean, it just, so it's, it was kind of different, but it was the same in that you kept them out of the end zone. What what was the takeaway on that part uh, of the game of, of just keeping them out of the end zone? And what, what changed once they got over the 50? I don't think anything changed. It was, you know, we talked about as a defense, we need to not back tackle more. I mean, we would get guys at the line of scrimmage, it could be second and seven, and end up being a second and two because they just fall forwards. Um, and we talked about it. Uh, uh, our tackling was not where it needed to be. 
uh, during the game. We had way too many missed tackles. You know, we're emphasizing that week and going forwards, we need to emphasize it. Um, you know, and I don't think it was anything past the 50 that made any difference. Um, we always say, uh, bend up, but don't break. Um, you know, I think we really uh, characterized that. Anybody have another for Chaz? Okay, Chaz, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Chaz. Chaz.